the Molentary Express has pulled into the quiet farming village of Dropstone. Upon arriving, it appears that Dropstone is in the midst of celebrating its 50th anniversary. To pass the time, Leighton, Luke, and Flora decide to ask around for information on the Elysium Box. Good morning everybody, it's Midnight and Beyond, welcoming you back to the world of Professor Leighton and the Diabolical Box. I don't know why it's not called the Elysian Box, but I guess that doesn't sound as diabolical on store shelves. In Japan, it's called Pandora's Box. Or, is it Japan? It might be Japan and Europe, but whatever. In the last episode, we got here to drop stone, and people started getting really weird whenever we mentioned the uh, Elysian Box. And there were also some other shady characters and conundrums scattered throughout this village. Let's see if that continues in this episode. Look at that crazy looking tree, Professor. It's all warped. With a structure like that, it must be quite odd. I wonder how long it's been there. Oh, Luke, our little conversation reminded me of a puzzle I know. Care to hear it? Sure. Puzzle number 34, trees on an old road. Take me home, country roads, to the place where I belong. Professor Layton and little Luke, this song fell flat. Stick to Let's Plays. The country road you see here is lined with a single straight row of trees, each painted at a different time and each a different distance from its neighbor. Of the five trees labeled A through E, which two trees have the greatest distance between them? Study the diagram carefully and draw a line between the letters of the two trees you've chosen. On a multiple choice lately. Hint number one. It's a simple question, so try not to overthink it. That's it! Like, this is... I love that. On one hand, like, I would get really sick and mad if I wasted a hint coin on them being like, just think about it. Like, I ask for a hint, then they just tell me to stink and put in effort into it, which is stinking dumb, but I love it. Uh, hint number two. This puzzle has a set trap. Has set a trap for you in the wording... There are no outright lies, but you will need to read carefully. Hint number three. Just draw a line between the two trees with the greatest amount of space between them. No one ever said he had to choose two trees directly adjacent to one another. Ah, 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 ah. The solution is A and E. Hmm, let's see if this works. Piece of cake. The ant's right! Perhaps I should have prepared something a bit more challenging for you, Luke. Well, we'll save that for our next time. For now, let's continue our walk about the village. And we got a new hamster toy, a tree stump. Okay. Anything else around here? We got hint coin. Uh, no hint coins. Hint coins as far as the eye can see. Or as far as the eye cannot see, because I can't find any other ones. And you can't even see them until you click on them. I mean to click on the tree again. Blah, blah, blah. Talk to the lady. She's got a puzzle for us as well. Laurel. Or maybe it's Yanny. Hey there, fellow. I'm in a real bind here. Help an old gal out, will you? What seems to be the problem, madame? My sweet little bird fell down a hole in the ground here. Oh, that's horrible. I want to help the poor thing, but I just can't reach her. Do you have any ideas? I believe there's something we could try. Is it water again? Like that golf puzzle or the tennis puzzle in the first game? Puzzle number 36, The Trapped Bird. Oh no, Yanny's poor little bird has fallen down a long, winding hole in the ground. In front of the bird are three paths labeled A, B, and C. Which tunnel should the bird take in order to make it to the backyard? Or above ground, a backyard. Hint number one. Each tunnel branches off in a number of directions, so you may have trouble processing everything if you're relying on your eyes alone. Use your stylus and trace each route to get a better understanding of each tunnel. Hint number two. The wrong tunnels all split off in a number of directions, but the tunnel you're looking for will reconverge into a single path before it reaches the exit. Hint number three. All of the paths stemming from tunnel A can take you deeper into the ground or into the snake's den. So it's basically telling you it's not A, and the solution is B for bird. Consider this puzzle solved. 
Damn, there we have it. 69! Also, I like to imagine the stinking bird down there being like, giving us this description of all the tunnels. Be like, there are all these branching tunnels, but I need to find out which one is the one that won't get me eaten. And I could take all these branching paths. Which one should I take? And then we're like, take path B. I don't know. It's very weird. There's my little birdie. I was worried she'd be stuck down there forever. I wish I had some way of thanking you properly. Oh, I know. Here, you can have this tea set and these lovely herbs. Take them, I insist. And that's the final minigame. The tea set minigame has been added to the trunk. No gentleman would be complete without a spot of tea by his side. You got the ingredient oasis leaf. Is it like ever oasis? Eh, probably not. And the brisk berry. And the bell tart seed. A lot, of a lot of singing tea we're getting. I don't know anything about tea, so I don't know what any of this means. But I do know that we'll be doing it at the end of the LP. But I guess we just look at it right now if you want to. We've got new hamster stuff we can look at. Okay, we're done looking at it. <laughs> tea set. Combine the ingredients you've gathered to make a variety of delicious teas or delectable teas. Tea ingredients currently in your possession can be found in the box shown on the touch screen. Tap on the ingredient to learn its name and the properties it could give your tea. When you're ready to make the tea, tap the ingredients you want to use and drag them into the teapot. You'll need to place three ingredients in the teapot before you can start brewing your tea. Keep in mind that you could use more than one of the same herb in your con in your concoctions. Once you've put the third ingredient in the, in the teapot, the lid next to it will start to wiggle. Place the lid on top of the teapot to start brewing your tea. If your creation turns out tasty, the recipe for it will be added to your list of teas. You can check up your list of recipes at any time by tapping the tea set icon. While viewing your list of teas, tap a teacup to the to see that tea's name and characteristics. Once you find a tea that you like, tap serve to give to Luke and Layton a taste of what you've made. There are 12 recipes in all. Discover them all to unlock a neat bonus. Gotta collect all the teas. But not right now. Help, what the fruit? Help, combine three units to brew a tasty pot of tea. What do you want, Leighton? I'm feeling less than my best. Will you make a will you make me a tea with an oasis leaf, briskberry, and bell tart seed? Uh that's very convenient that we have everything that he needs. It's weird that it just says help instead of like new. I guess I'm just gonna leave it like that for now. It's kinda weird. Did not mean to go in there again. Want to use the shoe. Uh, that's it, apparently. We just sort of explored around the entire town. Uh, nothing seems to change over here. Oh, wait, the person's gone, so we can go forward. Look at all these booths. Now this is what I call a festival. Hey, wait, a festival? Oasis? Leave it really is ever Oasis. Oh, I just love all the hustle and bustle. It's so wonderful. Shall we walk around and take in more of the sights, then? Definitely. The Professor Luke and Flora decide to check out the plaza in front of the town hall. Is that George Washington? <laughs> Party with one so- oh, I like that's George Washington's voice, apparently. Party with one so dear to your heart is even more painful than your tightest wig. Maybe it's Monsieur Bud or Rupert or something like that. When she was a child, I used to read her and read to her till I she fell asleep. I can't read. She can she looked just like an angel. Oh, nothing hurts so much as Sob's separation's knife. Gee, I don't know about that. I guess I've never really given it much thought. Our friend now, I wasn't expecting one as young as yourself to finally understand a pain such as mine. Don't mind me, I'll just excuse myself now. The way he was carrying on, you'd think he just got dumped. But he seemed sad in a different way, didn't he? Best not to pry too deeply into the private affairs of others, Luke. It's not becoming of a gentleman. You're right, Professor. Uh, this guy looks sort of familiar. He looks like a character from Curious Village. But uh, up close, he most certainly is not that character. Hey, fellows. Pleasure to meet you. My name's Albert, and I'm just nuts about our beautiful village. I feel like this guy's a YouTuber. <laughs> I heard you've been running about Dropstone asking questions, but you haven't talked to me yet. Yeah, definitely a YouTuber. If you solve this puzzle, the King of Dropstone trivia, yours truly will answer a question for you. Definitely a YouTuber. Puzzle number 53, Boys Club. Below is a wheel of male friends and female portrait of male and female portraits. Select a portrait and counting that portrait as one. Move six portraits either clockwise or counterclockwise. Then cross out the last 
of these six portraits. Repeat this pattern starting from the next available portrait and moving in the same direction. If you start at the just the right moment, or just the right portrait, you can remove all of the women in the wheel, leaving only six portraits of men behind. Circle this portrait. Remember, you could move clockwise or counterclockwise. Hint number one. The first portrait you choose should be of a man. Hint number two. Move counterclockwise to find your answer. Hint number three. The first portrait you should remove is the girl positioned at five o'clock. Short, sweet, and to the point. The answer is... The guy with the marvelous stash. Consider this puzzle solved. A true gentleman leaves no puzzle unsolved. Very nice. Thanks. He cleared his savannah. He got cleared his savannah after every meal. Expertly solved. Oh, it gave me chills. It really did. Oh, now he's a reactionist. Okay, ask away. If you got any questions about the village or its history, I'm your man. Would you happen to know anything about the supposedly cursed antique called the Elysian Box? Hmm, it's hard to believe, but you've gone beyond my area of expertise. I've never heard of that thing. What I can tell you is that people of this town jump at the very mention of curses. From what I gather, it seems they have the connection to the village the, the days of the founding. Unfortunately, that's all the info I can really give on that subject. Sorry to let you down. Okay, so at least he gave us a little bit of information. Not sure if he's been completely truthful with us, but it's better than nothing, I suppose. These are all posters of cows. That's odd. <laughs> okay, I'm glad I read that one. Oh, hey, a puzzle. Look at this monument here, Professor. It appears to be commemorating something. Why don't we take a closer look? Wish me a closer look. Puzzle number 30, a secret message. Oh, this is our first instance of a puzzle that is outright different depending on what region you're playing so if you're playing the european version of this game your puzzle will be called the wrong date i'm not going over that puzzle i'm going over this one which is only exclusive which is only in the north american version on the day dropstone was founded 50 years ago the villagers tossed jesus christ so much text the villagers toasted with red wine and danced late into the night they also built this statue engraving it with the word red and the date 812 Part of the statue is shaped like a wineless, a wine glass, not a wineless, a wine glass, and can be filled with water from the spout of the top. While the statue itself, while the statue describes the villagers' activities on the day of the founding, it could also show where they all found themselves the day after the festival. Can you figure out where the villagers were? Answer in three letters. Hint number one. The puzzle asks you to answer a three-letter word. Say, part of the engraving is the three-letter word red. That's not just a coincidence, is it? Hint number two. Imagine how things would look if you filled the wine glass of the monument to the brim with the water. Hint number three. When the wine glass part of the monument is filled with water, the bottom half of the inscription is of 8 through 12 red, is submerged in water, and the top half casts a reflection on the water's surface. Can you picture what that would look like? Uh, apparently it would look like not red, but after drinking, they would probably be... They would be... They would be... in bed. Consider this puzzle solved. And there we have it. According to the writing here, this village was founded by its first settler 50 years ago. It's strange how 50 years is a long time for a person, but not much time at all for a village. Quite so. But this fact just invites more questions. Why did this founder come here in the first place? It's hard to believe he or she simply set forth from their old residence to found a new village. Looks like this place has had a lot more connections to our mystery than it originally than we originally thought it was going to. Got a hidden coin right there. We got uh, nothing else over here. It seems. Uh, oh, one more puzzle. This building appears to be the town hall. Yes, but look at it. It's closed for. 
Look, it looks like it's closed for that day. Jesus. Well, they probably wanted to give everyone a chance to enjoy today's festivities. Luke, this reminds me of a puzzle set in front of a town hall like this one. Care to give it a go? How convenient would I ever? Puzzle number 47, the mayoral election. Uh. Three people at odds with one another are running for mayor in the upcoming town election. Including these three candidates, the town has a voter population of 40 people. In order to win, a candidate must get more votes than any other candidate. If each of the 40 voters casts a single vote and every vote is recognized, what is the fewest number of votes a candidate needs to secure victory with, with certainty? Hint number one. Think about how many votes exist in the town, excluding the three cast by the candidates themselves. Hint number two. Even the three candidates themselves have the right to vote. Of course, seeing as how each of them wants to win, it's a given that the candidates will likely vote for themselves. Hint number three. 40 votes minus 3 votes cast by the candidates leaves you with 37. Find the number of votes it takes to gain a majority in a pool of 37 voters. And add one additional vote to that sum to get your answer. The solution is 20 votes. Hmm, let's see if this works. Maiden's Apprentice strikes again. That's right! A lot of text. Oh boy. I ain't reading that. Well done. Now we should really get back to investigating the town. I think that's about it for this area. Uh, we got three puzzles and just one screen, so that's really cool. Uh, we could go upwards to the left if we go this way. Or not. There are some more booths over to the right. Let's see what kind of stuff they have going on. Okay. Uh, we'll go over here. Hello! Look at the flying cows! Oh my god, they're so adorable! Wow, look at those gigantic cow balloons! It looks like the villagers are setting up the lives for the livestock competition. Livestock competition? That sounds like fun! Yes, I'd certainly like to see the competition myself, but it doesn't appear quite ready to start yet. While we're waiting, can we go see the more of the village? Certainly. We can return later when the competition commences. Yay! Professor Luke and Flora decide to walk around until the livestock competition starts. If you're expecting me to get enthusiastic when I read those, uh, guess again. Got another thing coming. Let's see if we can find anything. I mean, we can examine this again. We could get a coin in there. We could get no more coins anywhere else. Except for right there. And right there. Hey, one after another. Uh, doesn't seem to be any hidden puzzles from what I could find. Now I need to examine that for a second time. And now back to the left. So now we're probably going probably gonna to get the opportunity to go to the left now. Since we're waiting for the thing to begin. Uh, there's definitely going to be a hidden puzzle around here somewhere. That was an easy hidden, uh, hint coin. Oh, we could go in here. Uh, don't want to exhibit. That's a big cat. Um, it's not big the cat, though. Um, excuse me. Did not want to do that quite yet. Get out of there. It's just clicking around. Talk to this guy. Some patrol. Parcel. I've never... Or wait, maybe he's like a mailman. Like he's got a parcel. I never forget a face, and I don't know any of yours. You must be from the Voluntary Express. Since you're new to the town, let me clue you in on a few key facts about Dropstone. I know you're interested, so don't act all bashful and reserved on my account. Listen, if you know one name in Dropstone, make sure it's Mr. Anderson's. Not only is he is the fellow swimming in money, he pretty much runs the Dropstone. But he's a swell guy who treats everyone with respect, even the mailman. That'd be me, by the way. I always say that you could tell a heck of a lot about people by the way they treat their local mail carrier. But even nice guys like him have troubles. I hear he spends all of his time fretting about his daughter. That reminds me, I just saw a pair of unusual characters head up toward Mr. Anderson's house. The two said that they were police from London, but something about them seemed downright fishy. Two people, huh? Are you referring to Inspector Chelmy and his assistant? Chelmy, you say? That sounds right. He said he had official police business. Said he needed to go see Mr. Anderson. What possible connection could there be between Mr. Anderson and the Elysium Box? Well, it seems like Mr. Anderson serves as the head of the community. 
It's only natural that he'd know about who and what p passes through this area. He's a big fish, all right. You're right on the money about that. Heck, even if the owner of the Molentary Express stops in to pay him a visit when he's on his own. Yes, I bet those two officers are being waited on like kings at Mr. Anderson's as we speak. But enough chit-chat. We've got a festival going on now, so go have some fun. So, another bit of information. We're probably going to want to meet up with Chelmy later. For now, we have no more hint coins anywhere. Okay. We go in here, though. Oh, one right away. Very cool. Uh, this giant cat. Of course, the cat has a puzzle. This cat is... It, this cat sculpture certainly is expressive. Yep, he's cute. He's a cute one. Oh, if you like cats, Professor, have I got a puzzle for you. Puzzle number 51, flipped cats. Though they were flipped birds. Yeah, whatever. If you get that reference, you're amazing. Uh, One of the three color pictures, A, B, or C, is the same picture as the black and white one displayed on the far right. Oh, it's another one of those, like, thingies. We saw one of these before. Uh, the only difference is that the picture on the far left is content is flipped to the right and its color is inverted and changed back into black and white. We saw one of these before. Hint number one. Comparing A, B, or C with a picture on the far left is a lot of work and it could be hard to find differences. So why not forget about that black and white picture for a moment and just focus on finding the differences between pictures A, B, and C. Hint number two. Don't forget to look at those lines in the background. Hint number three. The eyebrows on each cat are worth a lot worth a look too. Eyebrows in each cat. They don't even have. Oh wait, no, the upside down ones. I guess just the way they're facing. Okay, yeah, they do look a bit different. Their eyelashes, though, I would think. Uh, but the answer is B. Consider this puzzle solved. Huh? Wonderful. Sounds so pleased when he says, "Like, oh, wonderful." Good eye. B is the picture you're looking for. The other two pictures are identical, save for the cat's eyebrows in A and the pattern on the lines in the background is C. You always make it look so easy. This person really likes cats, but of course I am not one to complain because cats are adorable and I love them. Uh, we got another hint coin. And one more for good measure. Maybe? I got another. Oh, hey, there you go. Right when you're about to give up. This lady with the big schnoz. It looks like Mama Phineas. Greetings. I don't think I've seen you around these parts before. May I ask your name? Of course. I'm Herschel Layton, professor of archaeology at Gresson Heller University. Okay, so honestly, up until he said it in that voice acted cutscene in an earlier episode, I was... I always had it in my mind that the name of the university he taught at was called Green Sheller University. I do not remember it being Gresson Heller, so like I just now noticed that. And it's really sinking weird to have to pronounce it like that now. Though I'm not uh, one to uh, scoff at mispronunciations because I do it all the time with like Koopa Kid, Koba Kid, and some other pronunciations or whatever. So maybe I'll just continue to call it Green Sheller and make people upset. Charmed, sir. Welcome to Dropstone, Professor Layton. My name is Dorothea, and I am the maid at the service of the Anderson family. Tell me, what brings you to our humble village? My companions and I are after an artifact known as the Elysium Box. Have you heard of it before? Hmm, can't say that I have. But the Master is quite knowledgeable about curiosities such as that. The Master, madame? Oh yes, excuse my thoughtlessness. I keep forgetting you're new here. I'd venture there's not a single resident of our village who doesn't know Mr. Anderson. I see. Well, if it's all if it's at all possible, we'd very much like to meet Mr. Anderson. Normally, I'd say he'd be glad to receive you, but lately he's been preoccupied with his daughter. I don't mean to pry, but has there been some issue between Mr. Anderson and his daughter? Well, yes, just between you and me and the wall, his daughter has been secretly planning a trip alone. Secretly planning a trip alone? Is that your way of saying she's planning to run away? Um, yes. And what's worse is that the master is starting to catch on that something's going on. But after much talk, we servants have decided to cheerfully see the master's young daughter off. 
So you're in support of allowing this girl to go off on her own. Why is that? Because the purpose of the trip is to fulfill the last request of the young lady's late grandmother. I see. May I inquire as to what that last request was? Well, I myself have only ever heard scraps of the story from other people, so I can't say much. But whatever the request, it's one that the young mistress seems to feel is extremely important. Oh, look at that! Here I am gossiping away when there's supper to prepare. Please excuse me, Professor Layton. I need to get back to work. Oh, before you go... Rats, she's gone. Maybe it's me, but it sounds like Mr. Anderson's daughter leaving home more than is more than going on a trip. And yet, for some reason, the servants are cheering her on. How odd. Yes, very. And think about the consequences should Mr. Anderson find out what's been going on. The servants must have a truly solid reason if they're resolved to keep a secret like this. What could it possibly be? I'm getting the feeling Dropstone isn't as ordinary as it looks. You're not the only one, Luke. But enough speculation. Let's go explore more of the village. Okay, Professor. Well, we're learning more about this village, that's for certain. How much of it is connected to the Elysian box, though? I'm not entirely sure yet. I'm wondering if we should continue or not. Hmm. So we can't go forward, but probably after that guy moves, then we could go forward. Um... Uh... Last screen for the day, then we'll uh, continue in the next episode, okay? Gotta get better with spacing out all the progress. Got a hint coin. Got up another hidden puzzle. What a cute little farm. Yes, and the weather is nice. It's so nice that even the animals amaze. The animals grazing in the field seem to be in a good mood. Great. Hmm, this feels... This seems like the perfect time for a short puzzle. See if you could solve this one. Is it really short, Layton? Puzzle number 38, moving day. Shouldn't it be moving day because we're looking at animals or something? Uh, apparently not because in the UK it's called four horses. You have four horses, all of which travel at different speeds. This isn't short, Layton! Uh, d at different speeds. In traveling from point A to point B, these horses take one, two, four, and six hours respectively. One day you decide to move all of your horses from point A to point B. However, you can only move a maximum of two horses at a time and you need to ride a horse back your uh back to point a each time you return to move your other horses knowing that you can only move as fast as the slowest horse you're traveling with what's the fewest number of hours it will take to complete your move hint number one when crossing back over from b to a you want to move as quickly as possible so make sure you put yourself in a position to cross over to a on the one hour horse when possible however if you always make traveling back on your one hour horse the top priority he may end up wasting time on other legs of the journey. Don't assume you always need to return from B to A on the one hour horse. Hint number two. In order to move all your horses from A to B in the shortest amount of time, you'll need to cross over from A to B three times and return from B to A twice. How do you make the most effective use of this limited number of crossings? Hint number three. First, bring your one hour and two hour horses over to B, then return to A on your one hour horse. Next, bring your 4 and 6 hour horses over to B and return to A on your 2 hour horse. This method minimizes the overall amount of time necessary to move all of your horses to point B. That was really stinking long, Layton, but the solution is 13 hours. Hmm, let's see if this works. Layton's apprentice strikes again! Not gonna say it. The animals out here on the farm sure look like they're enjoying the sun. Of course, Luke. Animals enjoy being surrounded by nature as much as you and I do. Get a tiny part from a horse, okay. Uh, anything else around here? I assume the guy's gonna have a puzzle for us, or some valuable plot information. One or the other. Or both. Me? That's something to say as soon as you see someone. I'm a world traveler, but I'm stuck here until I can score a ticket on the Molentary Express. I was hoping for a freebie, so I told Beluga one of my puzzles to break the ice. Unfortunately for me, he got all hot under the collar when he couldn't solve it. Here, maybe you'll have a better luck with it. Oh man, I'm going to win a free ticket to the Molentary Express. I'm so excited. Baggage claim, puzzle number 45. 
What ro- Ugh, sliding puzzle. Yeah, rotten luck indeed. While trying to pick up your luggage, you find that your bag is in the very back of the pile. The baggage po porter unloading the luggage claims the boxes in the hold that prevented him from unloading your bag. Use your wits to move all the boxes out of the way and reclaim your luggage. Okay, that's definitely a sign to end the episode off. At least we're not starting an episode with the sliding puzzle. Uh, I'm not going to go ahead and read the hints just because I'm just going to do the puzzle. So if you want to read them, though, they'll be on the corner of the screen as I get things started. Uh, so right now I want to get these two up here. These two to the left. Um, we're going to move this one down here and then these to the right. I know some of these, like, you're just sort of, like, swishing them around over and over until you could get the one thing you need moved downwards. That's usually how it goes. Uh, do that, do that, do that. Uh, bring this one down here, so we don't have to deal with it for a while. Uh, bring this over here. Bring the garbage just to this point. Uh, the green one's over here. Uh, reds go up here, this goes here, and oh, that wasn't too bad. Consider this puzzle solved. A true gentleman leaves no puzzle unsolved. Even though it's less moves, maybe it was just more challenging uh, to get it done than the first sliding puzzle we had. Apparently at this point in the game you should have 69 hint coins. How wonderful. You're a pretty clever bunch, aren't ya? We folks with you around, we might actually solve the mystery of the Voluntary Express. People say the train occasionally makes a stop at a phantom town found on no map. Could just be a wild rumor though, who knows. An unplotted town? Wow, I wonder if that's true. So we're getting some information about the train as well. Okay, that's enough mystery solving for one day. Do I have 69 hint coins? 42. Wow, I missed a lot apparently. Uh, But whatever, we're not going after that. And we're just going to end this off right here. Next time on Professor Layton in the Diabolical Box, we will go ahead and look for all the hint coins we missed so that we can finally reach 69. Nah, not really. This is Midnight and Beyond, and I will see you all later. Good night.